here we go. We're all ready? We'll do the song. Oh, wait, we got some here. The common ancestor that humans and gorillas and lemurs and rabbits and cheetahs and wolves and horses and whales all share would have looked something like this. So that whales and bats and everybody 85 million years ago, here's what our, our common ancestor looked like that lived on the supercontinent of Laurasia. That's why they're called Laurasia theaters. They look like this. Oh, yes. Cool. Squirrel. How many are excited to have a great great grandparent that looks just like that? I am. Do you think it was scared of dinosaurs even yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Bats are almost related to birds. Oh, I think they've got a ways to go. They're like birds because they fly. That's what fools us. I told my mom that. 400 years ago, scientists thought that bats were closely related to birds because they both fly. But now we know that bats don't lay eggs. They're mammals, OK? All right, so here we go. Your great great grandparents that look just like that. This common ancestor lived among the dinosaurs. Do you think it was nocturnal or no. do you think it was diurnal? Diurnal. Nocturnal. Wait, I have a question. Do you think the dinosaurs were more active during the. Uh, now, forget yeah. Jurassic Park where T Rex comes out at night. That's like wrong. But <laughs> dinosaurs, most reptiles, lizards, snakes, well, forget rattlesnakes because they come up. Regular snakes. Do they come out at night or during the day? Day. 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 Night. Day. day. Right. Day. Exactly. Day. 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 So if our ancestor was afraid of dinosaurs, would it come out at night or come yeah. out during the day? Nocturnal. Day. Nocturnal. 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 Okay. Probably came out a little bit during the day. I have a question. Ready? Okay. Sure. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, I don't understand. Like, was my Great, 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 great ancestor, a human like us, or was it actually an animal that was more like It was like us all the way back six million years ago, the common ancestor we share with the chimpanzees. We don't know whether it looked more like us or more like a chimpanzee. We're thinking now it looked more like us, that it was already walking around on the savanna, we think. But then it took to, to go back beyond the lemurs. Okay, because the lemurs and us kind of look alike, don't we? Sort of. Yeah. Well, we weren't. We're still all climbing in the trees. So the common ancestor. That's why I showed you that picture of what the common ancestor looked like. Eighty-five million years ago, there was no such thing as bats. There was no such thing as giraffes. There was no such thing as uh, cheetahs. The only mammals alive during the dinosaurs looked a little bit like tree, tree shoes, right? And then they, they all looked and like that. And then they evolved, and because once the dinosaurs went extinct, the little mammals went, cool, I can become anything I want. There aren't any dinosaurs that's going to eat us anymore. And that's when they all evolved. If the dinosaurs ever went, didn't go extinct, do you think we'd be here today? No. No. Right. The question. That's why I showed you that picture that all the common ancestors that they share tended to look about the same. They were all looking like a tree shrew. Yeah, some, some people were born before the dinosaurs came alive. They were cavemen. Oh, cavemen were a long time out. How many of you think that there were any cavemen with the dinosaurs? Cavemen were not with the dinosaurs, no. Mm -hmm. There are some picture books. Some people don't understand that, right? They often go to different churches than we go to. <laughs> and they don't understand that the cavemen were not living with the dinosaurs. How? How? Any grown-ups on there? Oh, yeah. No, I meant, like, they, why do they not understand uh, that the cavemen? Why do they not understand? I'll tell you the reason they don't understand. They're not proud to be related to a tree shrew. Only if you're, I, who's proud to be related to a lemur? I am. Are you proud to be related to a giraffe? I am. I am. There are some people who don't, who think that makes us like less than human. I don't know. And if you're not proud to be related to them, then maybe you're going to think that Ow. this never happened. Sorry. Okay. This is called evolution. Have any of you heard the word evolution before? Yeah. There are still some people in America who don't believe what the fossils and the DNA have to say. And I'm not sure why, except that I find this so cool that I'm so excited to be. I like this. I, the books I write are about evolution. Okay. So let's sing.
this. Ready? What's this word? Jennifer's tree. Has, that, has everybody had a chance where they climbed a tree? 
<coughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Wes, did you ever climb a tree? Yeah. Do you still climb trees? Kind of. Kind of. I always climb trees. I always climb trees. Okay, you always climb trees. Do you, grown-ups, how many of you ever climbed a tree? Okay, look at all the grown-ups. Okay? How many, when was the last time you climbed a tree, grown-ups? Uh, <laughs> two years ago. Two years ago? A grown-up climbed a tree? A ball. A ball. So what were you doing? Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. high up did you go? Not very high, because I'm not very agile. But, but I had to go up to 15 feet. Ooh, that's wow. a far distance. Um, that's one of the first grown-ups that I've ever... I, okay, I climbed a tree about a month ago, but it was to get into our fence. Okay, oh, it wasn't because you wanted to. There was no ball I want bad enough to climb it. Uh, <laughs> see, grown-ups will climb a tree if like a cat gets stuck. Yes, yes Anthony, yes. Well. Um, I don't know when I climbed a tree, but I climbed a porky pine. I mean, not a porky pine tree, a pine cone tree. Oh, a pine cone tree, a pine tree, okay. So what happens with the ground sauce? Ground sauce are born young. <clears throat> if a saber-toothed tiger comes along, and the, and the baby, what it will normally do, if, it's, if there's a big tree around, mama basically says, go climb that tree, and the baby climbs the tree. But pretty soon, they get to be, this can weigh, the biggest ones in South America, weighed as much as an elephant. They couldn't climb trees. When you get big, you just can't climb trees anymore, right? I used to be able to climb trees all the time, and, you know. So the grown-ups can't. So how did the giant ground sloth protect itself from saber tooth tigers? Claws. Exactly. It's got these incredibly long arms and these claws. Are, I can yeah, say it yeah, had really go, long toenails. And toenails too. Exactly. Yes. Just kick them. I don't. Or use your tail. Oh, oh, the map that was behind that. Okay, we're going to run through this again to get the map that was behind it. Okay, because they're all, their great great grandparent, 95 million years ago, lived on South America. Yes? Um, people said in my class that my, miss, my teacher told me uh -huh. um, that there were some kind of species of animals that traveled from here to that, and they thought there was a passage. Like a piece of land. Uh, oh, land good one. It's yeah. over on this mm -hmm. side, between Alaska and Siberia. So you're right. Mm -hmm. But it connects the whole north. Okay, I'm going to tell you something that's really sad. Okay? And it has to do with that land bridge. Trail of Tears. Because Lori, oh, that's a sad one, too. That's right here. That's right here, Georgia. Yeah, that's sad. Trail of Tears. This is a sad thing that happened. Five million years ago. Okay. So these folks here, because Alaska and Siberia are almost like connected, and they're for most of the time they're connected, all the creatures in North America and Eurasia and everything all evolved with each other. So they kind of they kind of knew each other, and so they kind of knew that if a saber-toothed cat's around, like you've got to be really careful. These folks in South America, see this little part here where yeah. Panama connects? Mm -hmm. South America used to not be connected to Mexico and Central America. That only happened five million years ago. How's that sad? It'd just be like the way the Atlantic Ocean opened up. You know, plate tectonics, it's moving yeah. the India north and it's just doing this and this. South America and North America used to be completely disconnected. So South America had its own creatures evolving and they never, they did not know any of these species. Well, between five and three million years ago, this land bridge started to form here, Panama, with volcanoes going off. You know how they yeah. have earthquakes and stuff yeah. down there, volcanoes? And it formed a land bridge, and now Fight. all Fight. of these Fight. scary Fight. creatures come down through here. Think of all the Ice Age Fight. scary creatures, the Fight. giant Fight. bears Fight. and the saber tooth cats. They all came down through here. Uh, uh, three million <coughs> years ago, they wiped out the South American animals. Well, that is sad. Mm -hmm. It is sad. And so we got these cool fossils, liptoderms and toxodons and what the boom, all kinds of creatures that you haven't seen unless you go to a museum in South America. But they got wiped out. There used to not be deer in South America. Now there's deer. That's from our, our deer come from up, up in the north. All the cats that are there in South America, 
Mountain lions are down there too. They, there were no cats here. There were marsupial cats. You know, they had their own carnivores, but they got wiped out by us. Did the opposite happen as well? Did they have animals come up? There were some that came up. And so who were the ones that came up? They could survive. Brown sloths came up. They did very well. Oh, because they can curl up. Yeah, because they can curl up. But for the most part, we just kind of wiped them out. Our, our, you know, your our Laurasia fear animals wiped them out. So isn't that interesting that it's, you know, that these things happen? Yeah. When do dragons live? You mean Komodo dragons? Yeah, all kinds of dragons. <clears throat> There's one Komodo dragon. Do, do any of you think that dragons, should, like, how many of you think that dinosaurs lived? Okay. Now, the dragons that you read about in some storybooks, are they as scary as dinosaurs? Yes. No. Real, like no. more scarier than the sloth. Than the sloth. Well, I'll tell you, the stories about okay. dragons were created by people hundreds of years ago before anybody knew dinosaurs existed. And then they started finding gigantic bones and skulls, and they thought, oh my gosh, dragons really were real. And now we know that what we call them is dinosaurs. But isn't that cool? People kind of knew there were scary monsters in the past, but there are no dragons anymore except Komodo dragons, right? And that's really just a big And that's a big lizard. That's the biggest lizard in the world. That's why they call them dragons. They're so big. Yeah. Okay, the reason I have this picture here, are brown sloths alive anymore? No. No, they went extinct. But it's my favorite extinct animal. So I had to show you the picture. So even though it's not on this journey, because only living creatures are on this journey, I had to show you because it's my favorite extinct. I've, writ I've written stuff about it. Uh, one of my coolest experiences, I have a scientist friend of mine who, he's died now, but about 10 years ago, he let me touch the mummified poop of a giant ground sloth. Wow. <laughs> that was so cool. You know how it was mummified? Because they lived down in Arizona, and they would go into caves, and they'd poop. And if you have a poop in a cave and it never rains on it, it gets mummified. So you dig down below all the cow poop and all that, the bison poop, and you get down to a lower layer, and you get ground sloth poop, and I got to touch it. <gasps> yes? Um, did armadillos actually evolve from like, um, old porcupines and tortoises? It's like a silly thought, but there's a no. That's a good question. They evolved from mammals. Excuse me. But it, it was after Africa. This is a good question. I really don't know. But it's a different kind of mammal. It's not a Laurasia theer. It's a it's a um, xenarthron that they call it. So what did the poop feel like? What did what? What did the poop feel like? What did it feel? Well, if, if I hadn't seen what it was, it, you could see little pieces of plants in it because it was a, 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 a vegetarian. Um, it was just kind of like, well, have you seen dried cow poop? Mm -hmm. How many seen dried cow poop? Oh, oh. I've seen oh. Dried okay, poop. you've seen. Uh, what is My it? Mom had a what, what, what is it? It's fluffy. It's not like our poop. Mm -hmm. Okay, but our poop yeah. doesn't get mummified. Yeah. What happens to our did, poop? Did, did it goes down. Yeah, it goes down, down, down and it gets to a sewage treatment plant and it gets all composted and everything. But I've seen dried poop. Did you know in Texas they have a cow pie throwing contest where you pick up a dried cow pie and you toss it like a frisbee? I'm from Texas. Oh, see? It's <laughs> you real, must right? be so proud. <laughs> I was, I'm from Texas and I grew up on a farm and we were in 4-H and a part of our 4-H fair was a cow patty throw. That's so cool. Yeah. And so yeah. those, those are mummified, right? Those you can like, burn them for yeah. food. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you what do people in, how do people in India cook their, what their did it poor, feel? poor people in Indian cities? I was once visiting India, and people would walk, you know how the cows walk all over the place there? Mm -hmm. They would collect cow poop, because cow poop has a lot of grass in it, yeah. right? And so they would then take the cow poop and use that to build a fire. And then they go on that. Isn't that fun? It just looks like a lot of dried grass. If they but didn't do fun. that, what would the streets look like? <laughs> Ew. Full of cow poop. Fortunately, people find the poop found. Isn't it fun that different cultures? Yeah, what did it feel like? Do you think your great grand do you think your great grand do you think your great grandparents ever collected cow poop? Yes. Yeah. Probably. 
I'm sure. Uh, probably so great, 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 great You from a lot of people. Yeah. A few of them look like snakes, the dragons. The ones in the storybooks do. Okay. Yeah, they had great imaginations and people draw it. Did the dinosaurs ever have fire coming out of their mouths? No. 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 No, no they didn't. But isn't it they didn't even have wings. Yeah. Well, yeah, the pterodactyls did. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yes. Time for a solo. Ready? Yeah. That's good. You know, we're going to get to that part. If I can get through here, let's go. Okay. Ready for the song? Ready for the song? And. And eaters, tree sloths, and ground sloths of long ago, all South American set armadillo. These are our scene, our friend relatives. These are our scene, our friend relatives. Are the grown-ups here? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. No. Okay, we can continue. Okay, Jordan. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Okay, oh, okay. This one here is one I did myself. Okay, how many million years ago? Whoa, 105. Was T-Rex around here? Yes. yes. How about Allosaurus? Yeah. Uh, if I had my dinosaur book, I'd be able to eat. Allosaurus, <laughs> yes. How about the long necks? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Probably some of the long necks were here. If your favorite was a lot. What was your favorite one? Dinosaurs. Yeah. Carnivores and gems. What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite one? Oh, Velociraptor? Don't have a favorite. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, I got a question. Okay, for each of the kids, now this is something you raise your hand for. If anybody has a favorite dinosaur, raise your hand and tell the rest of the group what it is. Okay, Jordan, you have a favorite dinosaur? Tyrannosaurus and T-Rex. Okay, T-Rex, okay. Omnex. What, what? Omnex. Oh, all of the different Omnex, okay. Anybody else have a favorite? Yeah? Well, I like the T-Rex and the Tyrannosaurus. Oh, the Tyrannosaurus. Yeah. Okay, you have a favorite one? I like the Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I have T-Rex and Brachiosaurus. Oh, Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus is a kind of long neck, right? I like it. Yeah, okay. Now, where's Colin? What's your favorite? Troodon. Was Troodon well, a, a, a veggie sore or a carnosaur? Did it was it carnivore? Carnosaur. Okay, Troodon is a carnosaur. Yeah, what's yours? I like birds. Oh, you know birds are dinosaurs. That's very good. Wait, okay. I like the non. Yeah. The non. I like the non. Dinosaurs. Rest, do you have a favorite dinosaur? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's continue here. Number 13, I'm going to do this myself. Aww. Okay. Please. Who is this? An elephant. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. I am elephant. Is it? Is it what elephant? continent did, did uh, I evolve on? Africa. Africa. Actually, it's true. That it's actually evolved in Africa. Cheetahs did not, the ancest, great, great, great ancestor of cheetahs were up in North America when they came down to Africa. I thought okay, there are only five kinds of mammals in my group. One of my close relatives is the very first animal listed in the dictionary. Guess who that is? Ant. Who's the first? Ant. Oh, Brona, oh, you weren't here for the thing to tell me. Ant. Ardbar. Ant. Ardbar. Ant. Ardbar. Okay. Ant. Okay. Ant. Okay. Ant. You know, this is good that you think that because N comes before R. But why is Ardbar before Ant in the D? And then a hyrax and a golden bull. 
Now, this kind of looks like a rodent or a mole. Oh, I had it in the middle. But it's more closely related to an elephant than it is to any rodent. Okay? And almost, it really, really looks Who's this? Manatee. Manatee. A manatee is more closely related to an elephant than it is to any walrus or seal or anything. Yes? This was way, yeah, that was like way, like so close to be like a mole. Well, like yeah, now their common ancestor was probably really, really small, about this size, certainly wasn't an elephant. It looks like, okay. it looks like kind of, uh, this <clears throat> one right here is a possum. Oh, you know what, that does kind of look like it, but it's called an aardvark, but that's very good. Well, you know, we're going to get to possums next. Ooh. Okay, good. All right, so they all evolved in Africa and they're called Afrotheres. Afrotheres. Okay. What do those? Those are aardvark. Okay. Okay, everybody stand back behind here. Ready for our song? And aardvarks and molding bows, high rats elephants, all born in Africa.
okay, we're gonna get through this quick. It's just, a Jurassic time. I'm gonna try it. Okay, Jurassic. Five. Long necks were around during the Jurassic. Long neck dinosaurs. No T Rex. Okay, how many species come in here? Who's that? Platypus. 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 That's the only platypus. It's a breezy mix. What a lay of Right. It lays eggs. It's not exactly a mammal. It's kind of halfway between a reptile and a mammal. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like the parody of a platypus in Finney's bird. I'm just holding Oh, really? See, I'm not familiar with that. Who's this? Spiky and Spiky and Spiky and Kid. Now, these two are really close. And their name is Monotremes. Monotremes. Monotremes, okay. Who wants to read this? Okay, Sydney. Wait, the common ancestor that humans share with lawn greens laid eggs. They laid eggs, okay? Now look at this. They're partly a mammal and partly a reptile. This is this is called a transitional species. Is that all mammals evolved from reptiles, and here's a living mammal that's still looks very much like the ancestor, common ancestor did. It's partly it laid eggs. Who are these? Who are these? Oh, yeah. Baby, baby duck bill platypuses. Aren't they cute? Oh. Who is this? Baby, baby. 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 Are they just darling? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, ready? And not quite a mammal. Awesome. 
of all joined together. 4,465. Exactly. And how long ago is this? Yeah. Are there any dinosaurs then? Yes. Yes. Before the dinosaurs. This is caveman. This is the Paleozoic, way before caveman. Paleozoic, okay? And so we have here, who's this? Snake. And what was that name of the dragon, the biggest one? Komodo dragon. 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 Komodo dragon.
Those little things that hatched? Oh, you think the fish would eat them? Yes. yes. So if you have, it's called an ephemeral pool. If you have something just during the rainy season in the spring that forms, and then by August it's gone, no fish could ever live there, right? Because fish have to stay in there. Okay. Yeah, but where would the fish go once it dry out? That's right, they die. So they don't even get there. Okay? So these tend to be, they don't, they're not on rivers. They tend to be pockets in the forest that are just kind of like go down and that they make these. So if you're ever walking around the forest in the spring and you see a pond that doesn't have, you know, it's not, it's not going to be like there, it doesn't have a river going through it, um, look for frog, um, toad, and salamander eggs. Here's, here's what, when those eggs come July, They'll have grown to about this big, and they'll be starting to climb out of the pond and for, for, for the rest of their life. Is that your hand? Um, that's my husband's hand. He's the one that's giving the program for the grown-ups. And it, it's going to be a spot in town. Maybe you can't see the spots on here. Oh, but you know how it, it's the longest-lived amphibian. Some of them will live to be 40 years old. You already told me that. Yeah. And you know why this is important? Because... Here in Georgia, didn't you have a terrible drought for a while? Yes. Yeah. And we just had this great spring with all this rain. <clears throat> well, there are some years where it doesn't rain enough, and so the salamanders come to this little pond, and they lay their eggs in the little pond, and the little eggs hatch, and the little babies come out, but they can't grow up to where they could come out on land before the pond evaporates and it's gone. And they just die. Aww. Isn't that sad? But if you live to be 40 years old and you come back to the pond every year and you keep laying eggs, some of those years your babies are going to make it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so to, in order to not be eaten by fish, they have to lay in a pond that's going to evaporate. But the danger is they're not going to get enough rain and it'll evaporate too soon. So if you ever see a pond that looks like it's evaporating like in June or something, mm -hmm. Go and look carefully and see if there's any tadpoles or baby salamanders that need to be rescued before it all you know. disappears in the thing. Yeah. We, we here's the scary here's the scary thing. Sometimes people will make ponds, you know, like for cattle to be able to go in. They're not part of really a river, but they just kind of take bulldozers and they have you ever seen that? Like there's natural ponds and then there's ponds and bulldozers? Well there's a the thing. If they make a pond that's a bulldozer, doesn't have a river going into it, how could fish ever get in that pond? Could they? Could a fish no. get in there if there's no, no river? No. no. What happens if the farmer then goes and says, huh, I think it would be nice to have some fish in this pond. And they, and they add fish, a bucket, they put a bucket of minnows or something in it. What happens to the salamanders? Yeah. They go away. They go away. So, if you're a farmer and you have a pond, you either have fish or you provide a home for salamanders, but you can have both. And most people don't know that. I've seen people who have wonderful salamander ponds, and they think, oh, let's get some fish in there too. And they add fish, and then there's no more salamanders because the fish eat all. So we've made it through there. Um, here we go. Let's sing one last song. And then, okay, okay, question? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you could probably have a bulldozer, put some water in it, add some, um, a, a frog, um, a frog might come by, lay the tadpole egg. Yeah. And then you won't, and then you, We'll see the tadpole eggs. If I was a farmer, I would do this. And then I would see the tadpole eggs, and I wouldn't put any fish in there. If I had a bucket of fish, and I, and I looked in the bucket, and I, and I saw that there were tadpole eggs. In there. That's excellent. That's excellent, Anthony. Right. Because now you know. Now you know that if you add a fish, it's not like you would get more creatures like salamanders and fish. You would no longer have salamanders, you just have fish, so that's very good. Okay, last song, and then we're going to end this. Ready? And. Lay eggs in ponds and streams, all frogs and toads, it seems. Salamanders and newts wear a wet birthday. These are amphibian relatives. Salamanders and newts wear a wet 
birthday suit. What's a what's birthday suit? I mean, like, it's really pretty. Oh, well, well, well it is. <laughs> but, well, no, no. Nude. No. Nude. Okay. To, when somebody sometimes will say, will say, okay, like, like in gym class or something where you have to take a shower and then they say, okay, everybody get in their birthday suits. Another choice. What does that mean? Nude. It means get nude because you didn't, did you have any clothes on when you were born? No. No. But you're just as this baby. So all of them, they wear a white birthday suit because all amphibians have to be born in the water. Do reptiles and birds need to be born in the water? Yes. No, no, no. no they have eggs that they have eggs that have a shell around them that let the oxygen and carbon dioxide go in and out. But the water stays in so they don't dry out. How do they make it? How do they get them? They put them, they push them out into the water and they have all this jelly around it. In fact, you haven't seen it. I'm going to show you. Salamander. Uh, me. 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 Okay, me. Were, there, were there any cavemen me. living with the dinosaurs? No. no. Oh, okay. Do you think our cousins were, did our great 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 great, so our great 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 grandparents at one point were born in, and they kind of look like salamanders. Do you think they ever looked like bacteria? Yes. Yes. Because if I had more time, I would go all the way back to bacteria. You see how we're at confluence 18 now? We had 18. It takes me 40 to get back all the way to bacteria. Can you show us? Go ahead. Just real quick? Yeah. Anybody want to stick around and just see real quick? I'll yeah. just flash them through. Who's that? Lungfish. Lungfish. Who's that? Coolican. Coolican. Oh, no, 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 Actually, let's sing that song. That's fun. The fish and sea can back to the sea and bay. Swimmers, the brave fin fish, salmon and tuna fish. These are our fine fishy relatives. These are our fine fishy relatives. Okay, next one here. Something, okay, our great great aunt, our great great grandparent at this point, we have lost some, from now on, we have lost something that none of our great grandparents will have. Fin. Sharks don't have it. Fin. It rhymes with, uh, like what you put, like what you put ice cream on if you don't have a bowl. Co. Okay. Go. Yeah. What is it? What rhymes with that? Bone. 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 What do they have instead of bones? Cartilage. Cartilage, exactly. Like cartilage. Okay. From okay. now on, no more. From now on, no more bone. Cartilage stands alone. In every shark and ray, they function fine that way. These are some ferocious relatives. This one is going to lose something too. Each confluence loses something. Oh, it loses a jaw. These are lampreys, and they don't. They have a mouth like a sucker. No, no, no. You can't come through this way. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. I can't see. Okay. No. Do you want to move over there, darling? Yeah, you can sit right there. How many people are sitting right there? What's a lamprey? But you can sit right there, sweetie. Right there. Look at that. Right on the floor. That'd be a good place to sit. What's a lamprey? It's like a worm fish. Yeah. Oh, this is. I took this picture. It's a lamprey. I would. I got to go to a river in Michigan and help collect sea lampreys. You know.
know how I told you how, it, how if fish, if fish get into pods and it hurts the salamanders? James. These are sea lampreys that aren't <coughs> supposed to be in the Great Lakes. You know? Did it bite you? Yeah. No, it bit him. What is it was sucking on it, this big lamprey. Isn't that cool? What? They were all what? slimy. I got to touch them. What those no, did it bite him? him? Yeah. It hurt. He did that on purpose. Because I wanted to take the picture, and he's a scientist too, and scientists are willing to suffer in order to learn. What, Isn't that exciting? What is that? What is that? That's the mouth of the lamprey. That's what's hooked <coughs> on here. See all these little teeth? Is he like that? And they hang on to fish. And what happened is when when somebody made it possible for boats to go from the Atlantic Ocean over Niagara Falls and go to the canal perhaps, and over the sea lamprey started getting into the Great Lakes and they started eating all the fish that it's kind of like South America, you know, with all the land fish that came down. And the lampreys are killing all the native fish in the Great Lakes and, and that's why like leeches. Well they're well they're bigger than leeches. They're actually a, uh, they're not exactly a fish fish, but they're lamprey. But they started killing them all, and so we were collecting them and we were killing them. Do you, do you How can we kill a lamprey? Or a lamprey? Uh, do you cut it in half? Do this like blood possibly? Hey. What's that? Do this like blood possibly? Yeah. Are they like yeah. yeah. In yeah. fact, he was sending some of them to colleges where they were going to dissect them because they're so cool to dissect. Okay. okay, here's our next closest relative. This one is the size of my little finger here. What we lose, we lost a jaw here. Our great 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 grandparent, who lived at the same time as this landslip lived, legs. didn't have any gills anymore. It breathes through its skin. It's so small, it breathes through its skin, no gills. Remember, this is before fish evolved. This is 560 million years ago. No fish alive, no gills. Everything's tiny and breathing through their skin. Okay, 24. Who's that? What's a sea squirt? It's a sea squirt is our next relative. It looks kind of like a sponge, but when it's a baby, it looks like a tadpole.